All right, guys, we're finally on to the locomotives, and it, it's kind of grown by four or five-ish engines, but uh, but it's actually kind of interesting. Well, we're going to start off with the first one I've gotten from this collection from back in the day, as you can say, from the last update video to present day. This one I actually got in 2018 as a late birth, a very late birthday gift for 2017. And I got this in like March of 2018, I believe. And this is a Broadway Limited AC6000 with DCC and sound, Paragon 3. And boy, I love this engine. And AC6000 is one of my favorite GVO. No, not, well, not GVO, technically. It, it's one of my favorite GE engines. So it's a nice big engine. And obviously that's the truck. It's just hanging off like that. There's nothing broken wrong with, or wrong with this or anything like that. But, uh... Yeah, unfortunately, CSX have retired all these engines. I think there's only one AC6000 left. Well, they've been downgraded, I believe, to a CW66 AC. I think that's what they're called, as of what it says in here. CW60 AC, downranked for, 40, for 44 horsepower. But boy, oh boy, I love this engine. Broadway Limited did a very good job with detailing, and this engine is kind of heavy, too. So... Obviously, it's in the special, like, uh, yellow CSX lettering, uh, Y and 2 paint scheme. Um, they have, there's the rear of the AC6000. Uh, it's got the big radiator in the back, um, which is pretty cool. That's kind of why I like it. I don't know. It's got a unique design. If you guys want me to do a separate review on this engine, I would. Just comment below, and uh, I might do a review on this engine. But look at this engine. You gotta admit. I mean, Broadway Limited. If you do not own a Broadway Limited engine, save up your money and get one because, and also take really good care of it too because these engines got a lot of nice detail. I don't want anybody to break their engine. Um, this engine and all Broadway Limited's engines are very nice. This engine, I believe, was like 320 something bucks. So it, it's, it's, it's expensive, but it's worth it in the end. Um, Again, this engine has sound. Uh, sorry about that. This engine has sound. Actually, no. Let's play it over here. This engine does have sound. It's Paragon 3, which is Broadway Limited sound system that they have in their locomotives. Also, another special thing about this unit is this unit actually comes with a smoke unit. Yes, an AC6000 with a smoke unit. Uh, you just take off the little... I don't... Yeah, take off one of these... Uh, uh, exhaust pipes or the stack I believe, I believe that's what's called a stack and you can just pour in the uh, smoke fluid through there and it goes into the smoke unit and there's actually a switch underneath the radiator let me put this little guy back and uh, there's actually you take off the radiator in the back you can actually see the smoke unit sw power switch um, as you can see, that's the switch. It's off because I don't want to turn it on because I don't have no smoke and I don't have no fluid in the smoke um, spl smoke fluid or the smoke machine. So, yeah. Um, and I don't think it's safe to have it on when there's no smoke in it. But, yeah, very nice model. I do recommend getting a Broadway Limited engine of any kind. They really make some really good models. I may get another one when I get the chance. For now, I'm, I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm not... Gonna, I'm not really into weathering at the moment, so when I feel more comfortable with the layout, how things are going, I may weather this engine, but for now, I'm going to leave it completely stock. I've actually ran this locomotive at K10s, and boy, it, it, it's really nice. It's a really nice sounding unit. So anyway, we're going to move on to the next unit. So for you older model railroaders that are inter interested in the older like locomotives and freight car ranges from like the back in the day, and stuff you might like this engine this is an a 1987 tyco sd24 that i got the train show in november 2018 i got this engine for 15 bucks which is pretty good and it actually runs really well only thing is i had to clean it a bit and also i had to put new traction tires in it but man oh man this engine is really nice i'll tell you that right now i mean it lacks detail but i think it's an old engine but it feels really nice i'm not gonna lie and it actually is a pretty nice engine this is actually my first high hood purchase to be honest and i like high hoods uh i actually thought at first this was an sc9 because i was wanting to get an sc9 for my uh 
layout. But it turns out, I was like, I looked it up. It turns out it's an SD24. But I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of even more interesting. Uh, I never predicted it getting an SD24. Not much I can say. Uh, once I clean this engine up and put new traction tires on it, it runs like a dream again. I mean, when I mean a dream, I mean, what I meant to say was it runs like it was new again. Obviously, this has like a little white spot on here. I think it's like a little scratch or something. I don't know how that got there, but the owner said to grease it or lube it up like quite a bit, quite somewhat frequently or occasionally. I can't remember, but like... Because this engine, I know Tyco engines, they wear out pretty quickly, but they're really nice engines, not going to lie. But overall, I, I just like this engine. Again, if you want me to do a review on this engine, which I might no matter what, comment below if you want to see a review on this. Uh, Tyco did a really good job on this engine. Uh, obviously, there's no number of boards. Again, again, that's how many of the older model trains were back in the day. They usually lacked a bunch of detail. I don't know how to take off this show for if I want to do any extend, extended cleaning on this engine, but it's a B&L chassis, SD24. If I'm right, B&L actually did have SD24s. They weren't that common, if, if I'm right. I can't really remember. I remember seeing something about a BNL. I remember seeing a B&L SD24 online and... Uh, yeah, this engine is really bouncy too. There's, I mean, it doesn't bounce when it runs, but like the suspension on this thing is crazy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the the Tyco SC24. Now this engine is actually an engine I got at the train show back in November of 2018, and this is actually a good engine I got for a really good deal. This engine right here is a Proto 2000 CSX SD60. Now. Originally, I think it was like 40 or 50 bucks. I'm pretty sure it was like, I think it was 50. But then I ended up getting getting the price knocked down to 30. So yeah, I got this engine for 30 bucks. But yeah, Life Flight made in China. Uh, really nice engine. It is heavy too, because like the Proto 2000s, especially the early ones, had quite a bit of weight in them. Uh, this one actually has a DCC decoder in it. I put I bought a DCC decoder Digitrax decoder. I think this was, I think the decoder is a DH123, I believe. I got the decoder, it was like 17 bucks. Pretty good deal at the train show. This engine actually came with no couplers, but I was like, you know, I'm gonna buy some KD couplers and put some on this engine because I was eager to run this on DC, as DCC on the K10's layout. The lights work on this engine, everything runs fine, but when I put DCC in it, I think I need resistors for the light because the light no longer comes on. So, uh, but that's not really, I'm not really too concerned about that as of for now. This engine is a really nice model, not going to lie, it's really nice. Uh, the handrails right here, they're loose. There's actually a little figure inside the cab, uh, Proto 2000 usually does that. And actually, you can tell, I believe this is the AC radiator fan, AC fan, or fan grill. And you can actually, these are actually see-through, so that's pretty unique. I like that. These handrails were loose, and I, they came like that. Not much I can do about that. And actually, it kind of got even worse when I ran at K10s. Uh, I kind of got into, as soon as I got on the rails and got into the main line, I had a little swipe, slide, swipe, God, I can't say it, side swipe little incident with another person that was coming through and we did not see our trains at all so it was completely on accident kind of did slightly damaged it um not not too bad so which is why i'm glad not much i can do about it though because this portion of this like little piece of the handrail is completely broken off this one i gotta put it back in the little hole right here obviously this is in the stealth paint scheme which was csx's like first paint scheme not much i can say about that detail and stuff because this isn't really a review there's there's no pilot or plow on here or anything so obviously it's got it's got air brakes and hoses and stuff on it but it's it's there's no plow so i'll have to get a plow when i get a chance to add some extra detail uh there's the back of the uh, locomotive the number boards are pretty well done um it's got extra detail that's what i like about proto 2000 they have a lot of detail on their models uh, this shell, like the walkway is kind of loose. Uh, I think it's like that on all proto, early Proto 2000 models because, I don't know, that's just how they are made. But uh, the shell is kind of difficult to get off. What I had to do is take out the gearbox 
and do that because I actually had to uh, put this, take this up again. You can tell I actually had to sand this down because there was, I guess there was a certain, I believe there was a certain type of KD gearbox where it's just like round and you could just put it in there, but I couldn't find that train saw. So I just got to grab a regular, I asked the guy if the number, if like the, if like the gearbox, like the number fives, I believe these are number fives work and he said he's like yeah they should work so i did it and this is the outcome so not bad but could have been better i had to sand this down so it wouldn't touch the uh truck and it would fit not the best like i said i'm sorry if i'm like getting off the top getting like off the camera again i'm trying to see it from my own view and not the camera so bear with me that's all i can say about this engine it's a really nice model so here are the last locomotives that we're gonna review for my list of rolling stock and locomotives I've gotten over the past couple of years since the last update video for my layout. These I actually got from for Christmas, for this is recent Christmas, 2018. And uh, you can tell this is not the type of railroad I've usually um, model after, not because I have a BNSF engine from the, ba from the Bachman Rail Chief set, but uh, my dad just got me these for Christmas. They're two lifelike engines, and they're actually rarely been run. They have not really been run. They've been in storage. So they're pretty fresh and pretty new and in really, really, really good condition. The traction tires on these two engines are uh, perfect. Like, it's not dirty or anything. It's getting it's starting to collect some dust. But overall, the engines are really nice. They're... Obviously, they're both BN GP38-2s, and obviously the number are pretty much inaccurate. Besides this one, but I'll get to that one in just a second. Let's focus on this one. This one actually is powered. The other one is actually a dummy. Uh, it's another high hood. Both of these engines are high hood. BN 2081 is not actually a GP38. It's actually an SD40. Uh, yeah, that's really all I can say. I almost dropped it. And give me a second. Okay, sorry about that. Anyway, so obviously I got to mention that both on this one and the dummy unit, the, the grills are actually kind of see-through. There's nothing inside of it, obviously. Obviously, you'll see the motor. Actually, no. What this actually is a pancake motor. The motor is in the front of the engine. Uh, this engine does have working lights and all that stuff. Uh, pretty nice engine. And also, you notice I have an EasyMate Mark II coupler on it in case I want to run it with my other engines. This one, actually, I still have the horn hook coupler on the back. I know you guys are probably thinking, I thought I hate hook, horn, hook, horn hook couplers. God, I can't speak. But actually, the reason why I kept the horn hook couplers is this. Because this car, actually, this locomotive has it too. I'm going to run these as a pair. Uh, and they're stuck. There we go. Now, we're going to get on to this one. The number for this one, well, actually, before that, uh, obviously, same engine literally the exact same thing except it's a dummy and it's lighter and the number is 8102 basically basically if you get the little <laughs> joke that lifelight did which is common to like all older hl skill engines they literally just swap the numbers so yeah i don't know they just pulled it off like that so yeah, actually, with this number, 8102, with this Jeep 38-2, what's interesting is that I actually looked up the number, and this the number for that engine is actually a GP38. only inaccuracy part of it is is that it's the GP38 is actually a low hood, and it's not a high hood. So, yeah. And I only, well, the only high hoods that I know BN had were, like, their older units, like the Jeep and SD9s. And, uh, yeah, that's all I can say. But yeah, really nice models. They do run great. They're noisy, but uh, they run really great. What I want to do, honestly, I want to see if I can put DCC in this engine. Now, I know it's, I heard it's complicated to put try to put a DCC in these older engines besides Ather, besides older Ather engines. But these things are so old and not they're not really common to use to make put DCC decoders in them. So I, I it it seems. I heard it's going to be pretty difficult to do. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it with these engines.